Uh, go, go ahead with 1 John 3.19. We'll start there. And, uh, there. Getting there. You're getting there. You're getting there. There we go. All right. Thank you. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Now, I just want, hang on. I'll stop right here for a second. <coughs> Go back to 18, because that kind of leads into 19. Excuse me. Can you get up to 18? There. My little children, let us not love the world, neither, the neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Little children, let us not love the world, the word, sorry, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In verse 19. That hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Now, what does that mean to you guys? This is what it means to me. Okay. I just, this is what it means to me. Know that we are the, hereby we know that we are the truth and shall assure our hearts before. In another translation it says, though our hearts be guilty, he's still, he's still able to override our heart. Because though, though we feel guilty, God still saved us. Jesus still saved us. You know, some, some folks sometimes feel guilty. They can't get over the guilt. They can't get over the stuff that happened in their life and they can't get over it. They can't get over it. And I just wish that I could get across to you exactly what God does in a regeneration. Uh, it starts over. Your life starts over. When you, when you are saved and, you're, and you are saved by the grace of God and by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ, everything starts over. What you used to be doesn't matter. Amen? Amen. Right. Amen. Y'all keep with me. I'll, I'll keep with you. Uh, but hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Uh, verse 20. That's where I want to get to. Verse 20. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. So I want to, what I want to get across this is this, and in this lesson is just, you know, we have like a few more verses in, in chapter 3. I'm just going to go through chapter 3 tonight. And uh, we'll start chapter 4 next time. But I just want to get across to you. If our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. Yes. Isn't that great? Yes. That God is greater than my heart, even though I feel guilty because of my past. God said, I am, I'm not worried about your past. Your past started the day you got saved with me. Amen. Isn't that cool? Yes. When you were reborn or born again, that is when your beginning started. Not when, not when you were born in 1969 or 68 or 72, whenever you were born. I don't know whenever you were born, but, you know, I was born in 69. And so, not in 1969. That's not my past. That's my earthly past. My, but my spiritual past started when I was 12 years old and I got saved. And then it started again when I said, you know what, God, I'm tired of living crazy. I want to live for you. And, I, and God saved me and forgave me and once again filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, and my life changed in 1993? Two? 1992? December of 92? God changed my life. God changed, I mean, I'm talking about for real. I'm not talking about I came and said a prayer. He for real changed my life. And my past started in 1992. And so God began to deal with my heart and, and, and begin to change things in my life. So I'm no longer who the devil says I am. I'm who God says I am. My past started when I gave my life to him. And not, not any, so it, even though your heart and your heart, you go, but, but that's not the truth because I know who I was. It doesn't matter who you were. It matters who you are. What did God do to your life? What has he done in your life? Has he changed you? I'm asking, has God changed you? You guys cold? I'm sorry. It's, I don't know why it's running. I turned it off. I thought. Maybe I didn't turn it off. All right. I, I tried. I don't know. Okay. Well, there you go. All right. But listen, God changed. God has changed me. And God continues to change me. I'm, I'm different than I was two years ago. I'm different than I was two weeks ago. I'm different than I was two hours ago. I'm just different. God continues to change my, my life and the way I look at things, the way I perceive things. And, uh, you know, today, God never ceases to amaze me. You know, I'm always preaching, we have to help people, we have to help people, we have to help people. We've got to do this and that and other things. Okay? And I'm always preaching that because I believe that. I believe we're going to be disciples of the Lord that we have to 
do what Jesus did. I've got to follow his example, right? So how this guy got my phone number, I do not know. I don't know. He called me, and he said, Buffalo, New York phone number. And he said, I'm stuck in Seminole. I'm at McDonald's, been here all day long. He said, is there any way you could help me? I was like, oh, I knew I should answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't answer now, my answer is her phone. And uh, I'm just teasing, but she did answer. Because usually if it says Buffalo, New York or something, I don't answer. Because it's usually a sales call or someone wants money from me. And so I just always I just let, let that go. But she answered the phone, and this guy, he had 37 bags of luggage. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exa he had like, I'm not exaggerating. He What's had, today? at McDonald's? At McDonald's. Dude had a pile, didn't he? Yep. So I took him to the Seals Motel and got him a room for the night. He said, is there any way you can come take me to Okima? I said, brother, I ain't taking to Okima. I said, I, I, I mean, I've gone, this bus, I can take it to I-40 because i got to go to pay tomorrow. But other than that, that's, that's how it is. But God never ceases to amaze me when I preach stuff that I have to do it. And I'm like, that ain't right. <laughs> Y'all supposed to do it, not me. <laughs> and so, but even though but it starts over, you know, whenever my life changes, it's supposed to start over. And how, how to look at things is supposed to change. And how I do things is supposed to change. And the way I perceive myself should change. Do you like yourself? Have you guys seen the, uh, the Dove Internet commercial where the people go in and uh, I just checked this out. It was awesome. I just had tears rolling down my face. Um, it's a Dove Internet commercial. And these, these ladies walk in. And there's a forensic artist. He doesn't see them. They're on the they're on the other side of the curtain, and uh, they have to describe themselves. And he he draws them. Okay, they leave. The person that comes in that they met that day and got and for like for eight hours got to know them comes in and describes them. In every account, the women describe themselves ugly, fat, not as pretty as they really were. And the other people describe them as beautiful, eyes bright, because they never perceive themselves. God, I'm sorry, never perceive themselves as who they are. And the other half, they perceive themselves as my chin is too fat, my my eyes are too big, or my face is too round, or my hair is too this. Or, and then he began to draw just like they said, because he never saw them. He never saw the ladies until after it was over with. And uh, and he showed them. Side by side, the pictures, what they said and what the other person said. If you can go on the internet, it's like, a, uh, I can't remember, it's, it's a Dove commercial. It's, you can look it up. It's, uh, uh, I have to look at it. It's, it's, it's very interesting, though, to look at. I just thought, how sad is it that people hate themselves that bad? That they just don't look, they, they, they think they're not worthy. They think they're not good enough. They think they're not uh, as good. And see, and though our heart condemns us, God's greater than our heart. And I just thought about that whenever I was, I was watching that commercial. I said, that's exactly what we're going to talk about tonight. Is that God is greater than our heart and he knoweth all things. Not just what I can perceive. Not just what I think is right. He knows everything. Not just what I think is the best way, but he knows the best way. Was the, what's that verse, Brother Ken, that says, there's a way that seems right at the man, but destruction lies therein? There's a way that seems right to us that God's like, baby, that ain't right. You're going the wrong way. Yes, sir. You know, the things we start discovering ourselves and they're wrong, God yep. knew the secrets all along, but He still loves us anyway. That's, exactly, that's good, Buster. That's good. The things, that, the things we hate about ourselves, God knows them. He loves you anyway. Isn't that cool? Then what's that Chris Tomlin song, uh, Indescribable, where he says, You know the depths of my heart and you love me the same. What a line of a song, man. You know the depths of my heart and you love me the same. No matter, you know what's down there, God. You know what I, how I feel about things. And you know all this stuff and all this hurt and all this stuff that's in my life. And you don't even care. You love me the same. It's amazing. It's amazing. Let's go to 21. I just think it's cool. I don't know if you guys think. But look it up when you get home. 
Beloved, if your heart condemn us not, I'm sorry, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Let's go to let's go to 22. And whosoever we ask, I'm sorry, and whatsoever, glory, I can't even read. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Go ahead, 21, please. <coughs> beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then then have we confidence toward God. And I think, I just think, you know, you guys can throw something out there and what's not, but I, I just think that John's saying, look guys, I know that you don't think you're worthy. I know you don't think you're good enough. I know you go to that little Pentecostal church or whatever, but God loves you so much. And listen, if our heart condemns us not, then we have, then, then have we confidence toward God. Are you confident? You should be. What's the devil going to do to you? You're going to make me say it. You're going to make, well, you know, that's fine. But you know, God is more powerful than the devil. Yes. Is what I was always taught. Now, you know, I mean, I think I'm in the right church. Is that God has more power in his little finger than the devil has. God, actually, you know, after all, God did create the devil. He was the, you know, he didn't, he, he just, he made him, he formed and fashioned him into an angel. Now, it was Lucifer's idea to turn his back on God. But God created him the most beautiful angel he made. But don't you have confidence to know that God is able? I, I, I just wish, this is, my, this is my hope and my prayer. God, just show up and be you. I want to see, I want to see somebody's eyes open. I want to see somebody, somebody's limb healed. I want to see that. I, I, want to, I just want God to be God. I want somebody's heart to be mended. That's what I want. I mean, I don't, I'm not looking for... You know, I like, to, I like to run around and jump and holler and all that stuff, but that's all fine and good, but if God's not, you know, if things aren't happening, what good is our hopping and screaming and hollering if God's not able to do some stuff in our life? I think that I just, I'm ready for that, Brother Ken. I want to see blinded eyes open. I want to see deaf ears open. I, I, I want to see marriages put back together. And how cool would that be? Oh, I hate him. I hate her. And God just says, you know what? I love him. I love him. God can do that. That's the only way marriage is going to work. It's God. Because you know y'all hard-headed. Amen. Yeah. Just let you know. I mean, that was, I'm not hard-headed. Yes, you are. Because you want it your way just like everybody else does. Amen. Now, you may, you may go about it differently. You may not argue and fight and throw stuff. But yeah, we want our... We want, we want our way. That's why Burger King's slogan sold so good. Right. Have it your way. And they're not stupid. They spend, they spend millions of dollars to find out those marketing ideas. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're, they're not stupid. They're not going to waste their money. Brother James. Brother Jeff, I was thinking, are my, are my incapable of comprehending the love God has to Oh, yeah, we can. Yes. I thought that before, you know, we just, are my unable to, how much God loves us. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Indescribable. <laughs> it had been in into the hearts and the thoughts of man that God had prepared for those of you. Exactly. I think it goes something like that. You know? yeah, that's pretty close. You know, the you know, this verse there it says that, you know, if our hearts don't condemn us, both our heart, if we don't see it as sin in the first place, then we don't consider it as sin. Right. If someone comes up and says, well, Jeff, you got this, you need to. You, mean, I'm, you know, as, as, as a person, a godly person does it. And then if God says, if, they, if the person can't do it, then God comes in there and says, look here, Jeff, you need to do this, you need to get this done. And you say, well, I don't see anything, I don't see any problems. Right. See, so you're just telling him that then what confidence do you have in God in the first place? No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. What else? Anybody else? Anybody else? It's just a shame. Got something? I know you do. I can't talk in front of people. <laughs> 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 Ready to go? 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. I, I just, can I just, can I suddenly want to preach for a minute? Um, <laughs> and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? How many times have you asked something for God, Jeff Nance included, handle the Bible, handle the 
Have I asked something and expected to receive of him? Why? Because I keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. But I don't keep that part of the verse. And how do I expect to receive from him what I ask of him if I don't keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight? That's how that conjoins together. God is always, I'll do this if you do that. Because God is a covenant God. And a covenant is always, I'll do this if you do that. That's what a covenant is. When you get up here and get married, it's, it's a covenant. It's not just a ceremony. I know they call it the marriage ceremony or whatever. But it is a marriage covenant. And what it is is, I will do this. I will, you know, love, honor, obey, whatever. Okay? Whatever you want to put in your vows. In your but you're making a covenant with that person. But here's the cool thing. Even if, you know, we've been through that and been divorced and all that stuff, God understands that. God, because how many covenants did Israel break with God? Thousands. And so he understands that. And, it, and he's a forgiving God for that. So, you know, I hate sometimes using the marriage, uh, the marriage example because people, I don't want anybody to get offended at that. But I, I want you to understand that it's a covenant. And, and so this is a covenant. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. If... Because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. If we don't do the second part of it, how can we get the first part of it? I, 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 you guess I, I thought you were going to say, girl, I'm calling you. Okay. <laughs> uh, <I'm gonna laughs> Yes, ma'am. That's very good. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anything? Uh, uh, what was I going to say? See, we receive him because we keep... Oh, I know what I was going to say. How many of us come to God... Go back to... Go back to... I think it's 20. I was going to say this while I go off for God. 21. Go to 21. Okay, that's it. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Here's what I was going to say. How many of us come for God like we're begging? Yes. 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 He doesn't want us to beg Him. We come to Him because my heart didn't condemn me. I'm not a beggar. I'm a son. And He expects us to have confidence in Him that He will do what He says He will do without becoming as a beggar. And begging him. Now, I'm not saying there's not times in my life where I've not just pleaded with the Lord, 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 please, Lord, please, Lord, please. But the but the mindset has to be different from, you know, I, I'm not worthy. Well, Lord, no, we're none of us worthy. But Jesus makes us worthy. If I can get that in my church's head, I, I'll be and that's in their spirit, not their head. But you know, most of us know it in our head. It's our spirit we have a hard time with. But beloved, if our heart condemn us not, which means, as Teresa said, if our heart is right. If our heart is right, and it doesn't condemn me to go to God and say, God, I've got to have this thing, please. There's nothing wrong with that. Saying please ain't begging. Saying please is being respectful. And so I wanted to share that and I forgot it while I go. But beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then, then have we confidence toward God. Do you have confidence to walk up before God and say, God, I am your son or child, whatever you want to say, and I have a need of this. And then we go to 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. If there's, there's the trade-off. Nobody wants to do the second part. We always want the benefit without doing this or what James. I don't know. I wish I, if I could write that book, I'd be a billionaire. You know, I mean, if I, I, I don't know. I know you know Because your word says you do. And I've, I've seen you heal. You heal me. Yep. You know. Then sometimes it's like, why? Why am I not, you know, why, why is my neck hurt? Why is my, and I, I don't know. If I, could, if I could write that book, I'm telling you, I'd be a billionaire. Yes, sir. I know that whenever I had my back surgery, I was 27 years old last year. 27, had back surgery. And I sat there and thought, 
why at 27 am I having back surgery? Right. So I went six months I was off work, and I learned more from God in six months than I had in a long time. I learned yeah. to trust in Him because I wasn't getting paid or nothing. Right. I get back to work. I had got a raise. Whenever yeah. I got back to work, didn't know about it. Huh. And uh, I learned patience. I learned that everything's not going to happen the way I want it to, but I know that God's going to get me through it. That's good. So yeah. That's really good. That's really good. Like That's good. I love you. Y'all are so smart. I love this movie. Anybody else? Yes, Stella thinks that just because she's not saved, that's the reason why the things are coming on. I said, Stella, if that were so, then God would be a respecter of persons, which he's not. Yeah. Because he allows he allows he allows what are called sickness to come on anybody else. You're not the only one that has this problem. But right. she said and, and you know the Mike tells her, oh, you need to go to church or that so that that would solve a lot of problems, but that's not what has to be done. That's not why she's sick. She, she has to have yeah. faith in God and, and, yeah. and believe him without a doubt. Right. It has to be a solid foundation, firm belief. Nothing else is going to do it except him. Right. That's what you got to do. That's good, Buzz. Anybody else? Oh, love it. Love it, God. Love it, good. Uh, 23. <coughs> Sorry. And this <coughs> is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. I honestly, this is, you know, I'm not going to preach this. I'm just letting you know. I'm not preaching it today. But I, I really believe... This is why a lot of people have troubles in their life. Is because, and this is the, the commandment, that we should believe on his name, on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. And love one another. Uh, there's so much of the church that, I don't, I don't know how to say it other than just to say it, but um, that they hold, they don't hold their brother and sister in Christ in esteem, I guess is the way I can say it. Um, they're not precious to them, I guess. Or how, how can I say that? How, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, they are brothers and sisters in Christ. I know some of us are. Some of us do. And I'm not picking on anybody. Please, by all means, please understand. Uh, but I, I think that a lot of the church, I'm, just, I'm not talking about just our little 90, 100 people. I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, had they had a hard time loving one another. And I think God said, you know, this is my commandment that we should believe on his name, and I'm sorry, on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. He told us to love one another. He said, love us. Love one another. And, and it's hard sometimes to love some folks in church, is it not? It is. Sometimes it is. I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes it is because they do stupid stuff and makes you mad. Well, don't sit there looking at me all crazy because your face does not, does not intimidate me. I would say, because I know what I'm telling you is the truth. Because I, I, listen, I've been in church most of my life too. And there's some people get on your nerves because they do stupid stuff. You go, why on earth? Okay. But regardless of what they do dumb or whatever we think they do, this we think is dumb, whatever, we still have to love them. We still have to hold them in high esteem. I just lost my page. We still have to hold them in high esteem. We still have to, to protect them. They are our brother and sister in Christ. We're supposed to fight the devil for them. Not that we're fighting the devil. I mean, I mean we, Jesus already fought them. But we have to stand in the gap sometimes for them. You know, we, we are, we got to, so many, so many of us are just let it, oh, that's sad. I'll pray for you at, at church and then we forget. I'm guilty. Because, you know, when there's 27 prayer requests, I'll be honest with you, I do good to get them all in the prayer. Okay? And then sometimes it's hard to remember all the prayer requests and, and who's sick and who's not sick. And so a lot of times I'll just give it that, that blanket prayer. God, touch those that are sick. <laughs> touch those that are, that, are, that are in need. Touch those that are having a hard time. And I do that a lot uh, because there's a lot of times I just don't remember. But I love this. This is And this is his commandment. Whose commandment is it? God's. That we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. That's amazing to me. That's amazing. Let's go, let's go on to 24. We're about done. 
twenty four. That don't get out every night. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that the, that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Let me read that another. Does anybody have done a different version? There's a lot of these and thou's and thus's in there. And people get kind of confused when you do that. Let me read this. Anybody have a different version than the King James? What's your guess, Julie? Well, <laughs> those who obey God's commandments live in fellowship with Him and He with them. And we know He lives in us because the Holy Spirit lives in us. I don't like that. Let's do another one. Watch out again. Did they say the same thing? Those who obey His commands live in Him and He in them. And this is how we know that He lives in us. We know it by the Spirit He gave us. Like that. Like that. Anybody else? Got anything different? This one. Here we go. Did you read the NLT? Yes. That's what you read. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with Him, and He with them. And we know He lives in us because the Spirit He gave us lives in us. Now, I want to go back for just a minute. <coughs> Excuse me, man. I want to go back to verse 20 for just a minute. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. I just want, I, I want to, I can't get off this for a minute. I want you to understand that you are not subject to how you feel. Okay. You are not, how you feel is temporary. What his word says is eternal. If I feel condemned by my heart, that's a temporary situation. But God is greater than my heart, and he knows all things. And so if I, if I feel guilty about my heart, let me just read that here. If I feel guilty in my heart, now I'm not talking about conviction. Now if it's conviction, you need to make something right. But I'm talking about you feel guilty because, here we go. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. He's greater than the way I feel, Brother Robert. He's, he's, how I feel does matter because it's real and it hurts and it's whatever. But it's a temporary feeling. It's not an eternal feeling. It's temporary. His word is eternal, which says, you know, let's go to verse 21. His word is eternal. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Don't live bound up. Okay. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it in the teaching, but we're having a hard time. Uh, but what are those things that have you bound what are those things that keep you from achieving, reaching? What are those things that keep you sick? What are the things that keep you, I don't know what else to say, other than keep you from achieving what God has called you to be? Is it your heart? Is your heart condemning you because you're not, quote unquote, good enough? No. You're, you're just as good. God, God has blessed you. God has said, you're as good as anybody else. I've, I've preached this for years. You're not better than anybody, but you're just as good as everybody. I don't care if they have a PhD in biblical theology and they go to a different denomination that everybody thinks is a mainstream denomination. I don't care what they do. You're just as good as the best, whatever denomination you want, label you want to put on it, preacher, as anybody else. You have just as much God in you as they have in them. He loves you just as much as he loves them. Just because the church is big, just because there's hundreds of people that go, does not matter. You are just as important to God as that church that has a bunch of people. That makes sense? I hope it makes sense. I want you to, I want you to get that in your spirit. I want you to understand that, that God doesn't want you to be condemned by your heart. He wants you to have confidence toward him that he's able. Yes, yes. 
I just believe God's able. I know I, move, I know I don't move fast. I do a lot of things fast because I wait on God. I wait on God to do some stuff. I'm listening. I'm trying to pay attention. You know, I, you get out there in a hurry and get yourself in trouble. I'm trying to. I'm trying to be led by the Spirit. I'm trying to let God lead me in some, in some situations. Let God, let God move and, and show me what to do. Because I don't know what to do in a lot of situations. But I believe that God can show me what to do. If I have confidence toward Him. If I don't, if I don't let my heart... This is the, this, okay, this is, I'm going to share this. I'm going to open my heart up here to you in this a little bit. This is how I feel sometimes. I feel so inadequate with the pastor of this church sometimes. I do. And I, I, sometimes I have to fight against that. Because I let my heart condemn me. But I have to have confidence toward him. That he knows what he's doing. And he's going to show me how to do things. He's going to show me and lead me and direct me. You know, there's a lot of things that, that, that need to, you know, that we do. And there's a lot of things that have to change. A lot of things are going to change. A lot of things are changing. But, but God's going to have to lead, direct, and guide me. And show me. I don't want to do something stupid. This is God's church. This ain't mine. This is his, you are his people. You're not mine. He, he is your father. I ain't your father. I'll be your spiritual father as far as God will let me and just talk to you and, and preach to you and, and, and try to show you the way to go. But God is the one who has to lead you, guide you, direct you. And you have to have confidence that he's able to do those things. And be confident. Because I, I'm not, sometimes I'm not very confident, Brother Ken. Sometimes I'm not in God. I'm confident in God. Sometimes I'm not confident in myself. And I fight against that stuff. And I have to fight against it. And I say, you know what, devil, you're a liar. And I'm going to do what God's called me to do anyhow. And there's just, there's just a struggle. I'm just opening my heart to you and telling you the truth. Because I'm pretty transparent. And so I'm just letting you know. That's the truth. I fight against that because, uh, you know, I grew up here. And so it's, sometimes it's difficult to pass to the people you grew up with. And, and, and sometimes it's hard to pass to the people that were your Sunday school teachers and your leaders and all that. And it's hard sometimes. Because it's hard to separate that little kid. You know what I'm saying? That little separation of that little kid that grew up in here jumping and driving by Christ. You know, but it's hard. But, it, but God's good. And God is faithful. And God's, and God's working on me. Please just be patient. God's working and, and showing me and directing me and guiding me and some stuff. And, and I believe God's, I, I believe we're on the right path. I believe, we're doing, I, think, I believe God's showing us some things and we're doing some great stuff and God's blessing us. I, I, I truly believe that. I, I'm seeing people's lives change for the better. I'm seeing people uh, that, you know, that, that are coming back to the Lord and, and are really trying their hardest to live for God and they're doing everything. That to me is a blessing. That encourages me, Sister Janice. It encourages me to see uh, the people that are, that are in the house of God and they had been in the house of God 15, 20 years and now they're in the house of God again. That encourages me. That God is, that we're on the right path. And I think God's showing us the right things. And God's bringing people that I just, God, I just, He has. He's brought people, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but, you know, we haven't been under 90 people. And, well, I guess we were Sunday for whatever reason, but under 90 people in a long time. And that's pretty good for us. You know, we can't hold too much more than that. I had to sit, had to sit by somebody. Lord, I ain't going to sit by somebody. You know, this is my family, too. Y'all sit, y'all find another. You know <laughs> <laughs> the front, I think the front one, uh, I think Easter, this was the only people that had nobody sitting there. Right. Yeah. Because they didn't want to be in the splash zone where I spit. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I just I just think that I just want us to uh, I just want us to be confident in who God is. I'm a confident church. A church that has confidence in what God can do. And I'm ready for God to show up and show out. Shake some people up, man. I'm ready to see God just move and people and say, you know, my, I came in, my back was hurt, God healed my back. Amen. He can do that. Amen. But you've got to have confidence that He can do that. I tell you this all the time, the breeding ground of miracles is what? The atmosphere of expectancy. You expect God to do it, God will show up to do it. But if you expect Him not to do it, He'll show up not to do it. I love you guys. Stand your feet with me. We'll get out of here.